this is Brundage. I am one of the members of the math department here at Redbud High School. I teach the Algebra II Advanced class. I teach Finite Statistics. I teach Calculus and I teach Pre-Calculus. So what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today was where you might be coming in as a freshman here at our BHS. So most of you are likely to be coming into our Algebra I class. So this will be done with teacher recommendation for your placement. So the vast majority, that's where you'll start as a freshman. Now, you could start possibly above that. If you've already had our Algebra I class here as an eighth grader, then you would be starting in either Geometry or Geometry Advanced, again, based on teacher recommendation. But the likelihood is most of those people that have already had Algebra I will be going to Geometry Advanced. That is going to be one of our first weighted grades. And so you would be able to get more information about that weighted grading scale from Mr. Giebert and Mr. Gini as that comes out. Um, otherwise, if you're not at the Algebra 1 level, you might be at the Algebra 1 Part 1 level. That's the first half of Algebra 1, taking the second half in your sophomore year. And then there's also the possibility that you could come into Algebra Readiness, which is a little bit below that, saying we need to get you ready for that first year of Algebra 1. But the likelihood of that is probably very small. Um, beyond that, in your sophomore year, once you're done with Algebra, you're going to be thinking Geometry. After Geometry, we're thinking Algebra 2. And in Geometry and Algebra 2, there are the possibility of those advanced classes and the weighted grades that would go there as well. After Algebra 2, we're looking at something like Pre-Calculus, which is a dual credit class here at RBHS. And after that, we would have maybe a Finite and a Statistics. Statistics is also dual credit. And after Pre-Calc, most likely, then we're looking at our AP Calculus class. Not dual credit, AP, that's a little bit different. And if you've got questions on those, feel free to reach out and ask how that AP class will be working. Um, we also offer a computer programming class within the math department, and that class is available to anybody who has already taken Algebra 1. Usually that's taken more in your junior or your senior year, although occasionally I've seen a, a sophomore take that class. It is a class, it's in the math department, but it's not for graduation requirements. So you're required three math classes for graduation, that's what the state says. And so your computer programming class, if you're doing that, would be over and above those classes. Let's say you are wanting to be in Algebra 1 your freshman year, but you still want to get all the way to calculus by the time you're a senior. You'd have Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Calc, and that's four years. So you're thinking, I can't get to calculus. But you can, but you would have to double up somewhere along the way. So that would happen in your sophomore year. You would go Algebra 1 in your freshman year. Your sophomore year, you would do Geometry and Algebra 2 together, doubling up, whether that's with Advanced or Regular. That can be done either way. And then in your junior year, take Pre-Calculus to get to that AP Calc in your senior year. So um, beyond that, if there's any other questions, feel free to reach out to any of us in the math department. We'd be happy to help. Hi, I'm Ms. Ryan Hart. I teach Algebra 1 and Algebra 1 Part 1. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Part 1, like how the sequence goes. So when you come in, you're taking Algebra 1 Part 1 the entire first year. And so this is kind of half of the Algebra 1 curriculum broken down so the students can really have like a good grasp of the material. Um, and then your sophomore year, you move into Algebra 1 Part 2. So you do get two full credits for this. It's not like you just get half a credit. You get two full math credits, two full years, even though you're taking Algebra 1 over those two years. So then after that, your junior year, you'll move into Geometry. And then finally, your senior year, you'll move into Algebra 2. So that's kind of the sequence for um, that one if you come in with Part 1. Some questions that I get are, well, I answered it, it is two full credits. I want to make that clear. And it is a two-year class. Some of the students came in this year were a little bit confused about that, um, but it is full two years. Then another thing that I get is how do you decide or how is it decided that students end up in part one or if they end up in algebra one, your eighth grade teacher will decide that. So if you have any questions, you can ask them. They're the ones that are placing all the students. Um, also, the difference between Algebra 1 and Algebra 1 Part 2 is basically like, it's just cut in half. That's really the only thing. It's just half of the curriculum of Algebra 1 is in a whole year for Algebra 1 Part 1. 
And also I would really check with um, college if you're interested in college or you're even thinking about that to continue to take Algebra 2 your senior year because I know we have a three credit system here at Redbud that you have to graduate with three math credits. But I do recommend taking that Algebra 2 your senior year because many colleges and junior colleges look at that. But that's all that I really have to explain Algebra 1 Part 1. If you have any questions, um, please email me. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks. Hi, I'm Terry Meyer. I'm one of the science teachers here at Redbud High School. Uh, the other science teachers are Ms. Julie Lewis and Mr. Brian McGee. I wanted to come to you today or talk to you today about your eighth grader moving into the high school and the science curriculum and how to navigate it and use it to the best of your ability. Uh, so my advice and the advice of the other two science teachers is that most students or generally most students take biology their first year as a freshman. There are on occasion um, a class where there's physical science, which is kind of a, a broad uh, topic. It covers a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of physical science, a little bit of biology. It's really just broad in general. I mean, and it's sometimes a good starting point for some students. But in general, we like for them to take biology first. Their second year is a sophomore chemistry. Uh, that's pretty much if you're coming out of biology, you go straight to chemistry. You can move into ag science with Mr. Wilson, we'll talk about as well. After chemistry, you might want to have a discussion with Mr. Giebert as to what your career goals are. If your career goals are more engineering and pharmacy, then you might want to go into Chem 2 and look into physics and those types of organic, or excuse me, inorganic sciences, I misspoke. If you're thinking about the health fields, medicine or PT, OT, or becoming a physician, then you would like to go into the organic. That would be bio two, anatomy, and you can take chem too. We do have students that do double up. The one thing I want you to understand is that if you are, if you, if you as a student or parent as a student think your child is gonna go to college, three years of science is pretty standard and that's what they like to see. If your child or student is going into college to be in the science field, we recommend four years of science. Even though you can graduate from Redbud High School with two years of science, the college curriculums are looking at probably a minimum of three, if not four, depending on the field you're going in. So be aware of that as you start your career here at Redbud High School. If you need anything else, you can contact me. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Severs. I am the English and or English one and English two A teacher at Redbud High School. Um, just kind of here to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of English options and what you were looking at. Um, as freshmen, everybody will enter the regular English one class. Um, we do not have advanced for freshmen. Everybody comes in at the basic English one level. Uh, typically, we have four or five classes of it. Um, then your sophomore year, we kind of, you guys will determine kind of if you're going the college track or not um, based on your grades and teacher discussion. Um, you guys have the option of taking English 2 or English 2A. English 2A is obviously English 2 Advanced. Uh, Discussion about the college track, I guess is what we'll call it, the advanced track. So as a freshman, you do English 1, as a sophomore, English 2A, as a junior, English 3A, and as a senior, you could take the college comp college composition classes for slew credit. Um, otherwise, you would take English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. You have four years of English required, so those are your options. We do have two elective classes that you can take as elective credit or um, in a case of early graduation, which is a whole nother ballgame of issues. Um, but we have a creative writing class that is taught by Mrs. Roth, and she loves the creative writing, loves getting into it and getting kids to write for enjoyment and for things they want to write. 
And we have the young adult literature class, which is taught by Mrs. Stepping. And it is one of her favorite classes as well. And in this class, it's, it's reading young adult literature. So it's a lot of novels and kids read. This is for the very avid reader, the one who wants more reading and discussion. Um, you can take, if, if you start in English 2A and you decide you want to go down to English 3, you can. If you start in English 2 and you decide you want to take 3A, you can based on grades and recommendation. However, once you are in 3, once you're in English 3, you're pretty much set. So you cannot take college comp without taking English 3A. So if you reach your junior year and you haven't taken any advanced classes and you decide you want to take college comp, you're going to have a problem because obviously English 2A and 3A helps to prep you for that college class. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through the school email and I look forward to seeing you guys in the fall. Bye. Hi, I'm Mrs. Simpson. I am the business teacher here at Rabbit High School. All freshmen will be with me as part of a required class that's career exploration. You will also see me either junior or senior year through consumer education. So I'll talk a little bit more about both of those classes as well as some of the electives that we have to offer here in the business department. Uh, the career exploration class is a nine week class and it's partnered with Driver's Ed. So students will see me for the careers exploration and they'll flip to the Driver's Ed during that same semester. In that career exploration class, we talk a little bit about financial literacy. We, of course, explore different career options that are out there. We look at college a little bit and some alternatives to college. And uh, we finish out that class looking at what we want to take for classes for the next four years while we're at Rabbit High School. So that way they have an idea as to some careers that are out there, the classes that might be helpful in order to be able to get them to those careers. Uh, consumer education they will take with me later, junior and senior year, and that gets more in depth into a lot of those topics, but more importantly into the personal finance side of things. So we talk about banking, investments, um, savings, buying cars, buying houses, those types of things as well. The other electives that we have here in the business department, an excellent elective for freshmen is computer concepts, especially those that either aren't comfortable with the Google apps as far as Google Docs, Google Sheets, slides, sites, or if they just want to learn more about those applications. We spend a semester in the spring going through those. Uh, it's great to be able to pair that with another semester elective, or if you want to, um, you know, something like your um, social studies or with driver's ed and careers, there's lots of opportunities to pair that with other semester classes. For those that are really interested in pursuing a career in business, we do also have a freshman elective that's introduction to business. And we talk about management, marketing, entrepreneurship, and we actually create a business plan in that class as well. We do offer accounting on occasion. It depends on how many students are interested as to whether that class comes to be, but that's for sophomores through seniors. And then as our senior option, we have the co-op, which is a work study program. And students really do kind of have to plan their classes ahead as far as sophomore and junior year to make sure they get in the required classes because with co-op, they spend half the day here at, at the school taking classes and the other half of the day is in the workplace. And they do receive both pay for their job and they also get high school credit for those hours that they're working as well. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bandy. Um, I teach all of the art classes at RBHS. Um, so the different classes that I offer, most of you, if you're starting in the art department, would want to start with Intro to Art. Um, so Intro to Art is open to any grade level, so you can take it any year that you want. And it basically covers the basics. So um, you're learning drawing and painting and sculpture and ceramics, all of that um, in a one-year class. Um, and the other class that I teach that does not require any other classes, um, I do a semester of photography and I do a semester of graphic design. Um, you can't take them till you're a sophomore, but you don't have to have taken any other class um, in order to take those classes. So those are really fun. Um, a lot of my students that don't even take any other art classes enjoy that. So if you you know don't see yourself taking traditional art classes, um, you might want to try photography or graphic design at some point. Um, again, you can take that your junior, your um, sophomore, junior, or senior year. 
Um, if you do take intro to art and then you're looking at, you know, what do I want to take next? So you could take the photography and graphic, or um, I have some students that are really interested in drawing and painting. Um, so for those students, I recommend my 2D class, um, which is a full year class. You need to have taken intro first. Um, and then I also have a 3D class. And so that would be for my students that are more like they like constructing and building things. So working with clay and working with sculpture. Um, and that is also a three year class. Um, so for my seniors, if you, you know, have been really involved in the art department and you've taken at least three classes, any mixture of classes, um, by your senior year, you could opt to take portfolio. Um, and that is for my most advanced, um, highly motivated students. Um, most of them are, you know, really passionate about art. A lot of them are thinking about perhaps going into creative career and that's a much more independent class. And from that class, we can even, you know, help you put together a portfolio if you're going to school, um, you know, to, to um, be in a creative career or go to art school. So anyway, so those are some of the different options. Um, my advice would be a lot of times I have students come to me as, you know, juniors and seniors, and they kind of wish that they had taken an art class sooner because they want to take some of those higher level classes. Um, so my advice would just be, you know, pursue what you're passionate about. Don't worry so much about, you know, what your friends are taking because you're going to find your friends, you know, here, you're going to find those groups of people that, you know, make sense for you. Um, so take the classes that make sense for you as a person and don't worry so much about, you know, oh, I have to get this out of the way or, you know, this is, I need to get this done, you know, because a lot of my students don't feel like they have any room until junior or senior year and wish they'd taken an art class sooner. So that would be my advice. Look forward to seeing you next year. I'm Mr. Wilson, the uh, Redbud High School Agricultural Education Teacher, FFA Advisor, and Boys Head Track Coach. So in the Agricultural uh, Education Department, we have a wide range of classes. Um, as a freshman, you start out with Intro to Ag, where we go through FFA history, Ag history, and then we get out into the shop and into the greenhouse in the spring. After that, then we have the science class that counts as a science credit for graduation here at Redbud High School. And if you become an officer uh, with FFA, then that opens up some leadership classes as well. And then junior year, that kind of blossoms a little bit more where we have um, our ag business class, animal science, if you've taken ag science already, um, natural resources, ag construction, horticulture, um, and a few other classes that I add each year to just kind of keep up current with current agricultural topics. And yes, to be in, in FFA, you have to be in an agricultural education class. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions now. All right, so I, I reached out to uh, the eighth grade parents and had them send in a few questions here. Um, some of these we already talked about when you guys went through your, your programs, um, and I'll also have some, some more information coming out about this first question, and it was, um, what are elective options? and what electives are available to freshmen. I believe all of you covered that. Is there anything that you guys want to add to that or that you feel like you missed? I think everybody covered all their elective options. I mean, Mrs. Benny, you're all electives. I'm all electives, <laughs> but as a freshman, you can only take intro. Of course, of course. And you talked about all your, and I think everybody else covered the other options. So I'll just move on from that. Um, what is the main form of communication uh, for parents that teachers use at the high school? Email. Email. Well, that seems pretty unanimous. Uh, um, for for both teachers, or I guess for teachers communicating with students as well as with parents, as email. Long as students read your email. As long as students read, of course. And, and sometimes I guess we would probably put a post in Google Classroom, like if we had something specific to a class and we wanted mm -hmm. to give them a heads up, we might just put a post in Classroom that would go to all of them, <coughs> and they should be hopefully have notifications on their phone turned on and that type of thing, so they're getting that type of a notification. Sure, and parents also, there's an option for them to get uh, yes. notifications for Google parents Classroom. Parents can join the Google Classroom. And get a daily, I think it's a daily update, yes. is that correct? They can okay. choose between daily or weekly. Awesome. Okay, so that's another way where they can uh, keep track of what their students are working on. Um, so this is probably more of a question for me, honestly, but uh, Redwood Elementary School uses teacheries. Um, they're asking, does Redwood High School use this as well or another system? We're actually all moving over to um, Skyward, which will uh, actually allow our teachers to communicate with our parents a little bit more in a different way. There will be a family access message board where uh, we'll be able to post information um, 
you guys haven't seen that yet, but it will be coming. So um, keep an eye out for that, and I think that will be another nice way to get more information out to parents and families. Um, what computer science or what type of computer science electives are available to our students? So I didn't bring that up when we were talking about the math things, but we do offer a computer programming class. It is a full year. Um, so first semester would be like more of an intro, second semester is a little bit more advanced. Uh, any student can take that after having completed Algebra 1, but is not intended to be a math credit for graduation. So you, your three math credits you get for graduation should come from that type Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2 type of thing. Um, and then that is something in addition. So if you're taking that, it shouldn't really be substituting for one of those three. So generally, students don't take it until they've completed probably Algebra 2, which does help a little bit, but it can be taken earlier. Awesome. And I also offer graphic design, which is a semester-long class. Um, there's no prerequisite for that, but you have to wait until your sophomore year, so you can take it sophomore, junior, or senior year. And that is also a tech-based um, creative class. So we'd be focusing on using technology. Um, but we usually are using like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator. But if you're planning on going to a tech-related creative career, that would be a really good option. Okay. And Mrs. Simpson, you also offer some, yeah. some computer uh, I have Computer Concepts, which is a semester-long spring class. And that's open to any grade level. Uh, I often recommend it as a freshman level, especially for those that are not comfortable with Google, to be able to learn the whole Google uh, sweet apps, but then also uh, for those that just want to dig a little bit deeper, you know, that you want to enhance what you can do with Google's different apps as well. So, Thank you. And <laughs> in between the two shops, between Mr. Peel and myself, we do have CNC classes where you can do kind of that graphic design, but you actually get to make a 3D, mo 3D model of it at the conclusion of the project. That's awesome. Cool. Um, those are all the questions, honestly, that I was I was asked by our eighth grade parents. Did you guys have any common questions that you could ask that you'd like to just kind of have an opportunity to clear the air or answer those questions ahead of time? Um, I think a common question that we hear, at least in the elective department, is you know, is your class required? What class, what electives are required? Um, and for most of us, you know, we're not necessarily a required credit. However, you know, if you're looking at a four-year school, um, sometimes they like to see a fine arts credit, and that could come from myself or, you know, the um, band or choir of Mr. Youngie, or it could come from Mr. Brinkman, who teaches Spanish, or in some cases, it's just a matter of looking. If you have an idea of what you li might like to go into and what university you might want to attend, it's not a bad idea to start looking at that already as an incoming freshman saying, what do I need to have taken so that I can get the right science classes in? If I have to have physics, I'm going to get physics in there. If I have to have three years of a foreign language, I'm going to get that. And if there's some of those specialty things, or if I know I have to get through and I'm going to need stats, or I'm going to need that college algebra class, or maybe I need to be able to be ready for pre -calc or for calculus, you know, whatever it is that you're prepared. And the sooner you do that to prepare yourself, the better it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, like you said, best case scenario is you come in your freshman year, you know where you'd like to go, and if you do, by all means, ask me, and we can have that conversation. We can lay out a four-year plan to get things done that you need to get done while you're here. And you don't need to feel like you're stuck into that four-year plan. For sure. You can change, <laughs> and many, many students change multiple times through high school and through college as well, but you want to be prepared for when you're leaving here, right. and it's never too early to start. Right, and it is a good point that what we require at the high school is different than what a university might require. So, you know, just because you've you know met that graduation requirement does not necessarily mean that you have what you might need to start a program. Absolutely, and and on your registration form, there there is a list of general four-year uh, college requirements. So do take a look at those, and if you have questions, please feel free to ask. And I think also just not college, but if you're talking about you want to play sports, so you're thinking you are you absolutely love baseball and you want to play baseball in college, and you want to make that NCAA clearinghouse, they also have requirements of the courses that you must have taken, and so checking out those requirements too, if you think sports is going to be something you want to pursue in college, that you are also preparing for that. Yeah, great point, and also something that we would like to discuss, obviously, sooner rather than later so that you get in all the required core courses, and also we're talking about GPA and test scores so that you are eligible as soon as possible. So, 
Uh, any other questions that you guys get a lot that um, you'd like to kind of get out there for parents to know? All right, thank you all for uh, joining the teacher panel today. I really appreciate you volunteering to do this and taking time out of your day uh, to get more information out to our parents and our families. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.